Okay, yeah. Thank you very much to Miguel, Irene, Kumbo uh, for organizing this and, and giving me the chance to talk about this. So there was there was a recent workshop where, where many of us were and some of us were planning to talk about it, but there was some miscommunication and changes. So in the end, nobody talked about it. And I, I, I think it's kind of interesting. Um, it's a little bit older. It's from uh, from July last year, and it's done in collaboration with Nicolo Kripiori, Daniel Junghans, Vincent van Hemrick, and Thomas van Riet, uh, who are hopefully in the audience and might help me. In particular, Daniel and and Vincent did all the hard work, and and I think Daniel is on the job market right now, not just postdocs, uh, tenure track faculty full professor. <laughs> I think whatever is available, he would be happy and well deserving of, of getting that. Um, okay, so let me start. I, I wanted to start with a little bit of an introduction um, of, of type 2A. So it's, it's essentially the Rolf Garyavitz Castro Taylor uh, in, in long detail reviewed um, because it has very interesting features and I think it puts it right at the boundary of, of swampland and, and landscape. And, and provides an interesting testing ground. And, and I will essentially discuss the relation to swampland conjectures. And um, I don't know whether you can see my mouse. Can you see my mouse? Okay. Then I will discuss recent progress, which wasn't done by us, the localization method. And lastly, I will talk about um, a T dual solution of DJKP, DJKT, which is what, what, what we did in our paper. Um, so let me start with the very basics of flux compactification. So beginning 2000, uh, people started studying flux compactifications to see what is possible in, in string theory in terms of modulized stabilization, removing unwanted light scalar fields. Um, and the kind of basic example of flux compactification was ADS5 times S5, which, which is of course super exciting, but um, not really what we are after here. Um, so here, Hold on a second, I'm gonna mute. Okay, okay. Okay, so um, yeah, here, um, essentially, we want to get like more interesting scalar potentials. We want to stabilize our moduli. And, and in particular, massive type 2A um, has a lot of interesting ingredients, in particular fluxes. We can thread internal cycles with, with different fluxes. And it has all different kinds of uh, legs along internal directions. Uh, so it has fluxes with three legs. And then it has a constant F0, a mass parameter. It has fluxes with two, four, and six legs through the internal directions. Um, so that is like a very interesting starting ground for, for these flux compactifications. And um, if we only use these fluxes, we would get a non-trivial scalar potential. However, that scalar potential um, is not necessarily over exciting. So if we have Calabiao manifold tori or something similar, which doesn't have curvature, you just take the 10 dimensional action out of Polchinski and then you just uh, split the space in four times six. And in four dimensions, you find some kinetic term and some scalar potential. And I mean, I will cite later Thomas Grimm and, and Jan Lewis, they worked all the details out. But the problem here is that we have the minus H flux and minus F flux, and then that equals to minus V. So from here, you could read off the scalar potential. It's e to the minus two phi H squared plus some uh, positive definite flux quanta. Uh, that, is positive definite. So you will never get ADS or something like this. Um, you can actually convince yourself you will also not get Minkowski or De Sitter. De Sitter, uh, for example, if you turn on H flux, you will have a runaway for the dilaton e to the minus two phi. Um, Minkowski back here, you can only get if each term vanishes independently if all fluxes are zero. So you don't turn on any fluxes as n equals eight on a torus or something. So it's not exciting here. You cannot really stabilize all moduli in the sitter or Minkowski. Um, so that by itself is not that interesting. So what we need is also O6 planes. And this is also one of the critique points that I will get up to later. Um, in string theory, we kind of see the Ramon-Ramon fields as dynamical fields. Um, however, 
but have cities objecting to, I think, or maybe others too, we, we don't see this mass parameter in string theory itself. And we know all six planes are there, but is this mass parameter really arising in string theory? Um, it's not so clear, maybe I think it should be there. I was arguing that it doesn't matter in the end, but um, it's not clear how necessarily to get F0 mass parameter and the O6. So, so, sorry, Tim, can I ask something quick? Yes. Uh, we do have uh, Roman's mass in control string compactification with 16 supercharges, right? But you have like, you know, 08 planes and the eight planes and you move the DAs, you get Roman's mass. Yes, I think I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> I'm not sure whether it appears in writing. And Thomas van Reed said, I cannot, <laughs> you cannot ask him right now because he's grading examples. Yes, yes, he, he's, but, he's um, not available. I, I think Saf Sethi objects to the existence of O6 planes and F0 mass parameter. I don't know whether Saf is in the audience. Um, I'm not. No, I'm, 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 I'm here. Ah, okay. I, I'm here. Is that correct? I, I, I don't want to miss. No, no, no. no. I, I, I wouldn't say that's the objection. I, I don't okay. object to O6 and F0. I do object to. Um, Smeared O6 ah. and anything, smeared anything at Orientable doesn't make yes. any sense to me in either yes. perturbative string theory or non perturbative string theory. I okay. also do object to um, large volume solutions like this of Clavi out type because I, I don't see any. Okay, so we'll come so back. I, I, You're going to explain how there are, how there are some. <laughs> yes, yes. So I, I will address the smearing is one, of course, one of the big criticism. Um, and I will, it has been addressed recently and I will say how we address it and, and what the progress is, but this is a huge part of my talk. Um, yeah, I will say there are large volume and you should feel free then later on to object to that if, if there is something fishy or unclear to you. Um, yeah, okay. So um, essentially we need O6 band, so we do some Z2 orientifold projection, and then all the fluxes need to fall into even or odd uh, cohomology classes and similarly for the moduli. So all of this has been um, worked out and um, Grimm and Lewis, they worked out the Kähler potential, what are the moduli and um, what is the super potential, what is the super potential is Kukov of Witten. Um, and essentially one gets a class of Kähler moduli, uh, which are expanded in H11 minus, and then there is um, a complex structure moduli. So the orientifold projects out the imaginary part of the holomorphic three form of a Calabiao. So I'm implicitly already here assuming a Calabiao, and I will tell you later on that this is already a problem. Um, and then there's a dilaton and C3 axions. So the, the O6 planes together with all these fluxes above allow you to stabilize all geometric moduli. So this is very different from type 2B where we cannot stabilize the overall volume where we have the no scale structure. Um, in principle, we can only stabilize with the super potential one C3 axion, um, but they are axions. So in principle, if they are not stabilized, who cares? They have a compact moduli space. There should be some perturbative, non-perturbative, presumably non-perturbative. Uh, corrections that, that fix them. But one can also choose models with H plus 2,1 equals zero, then every modulus would be stabilized. And this is particularly the case in the original devolved Gilyavitz Kachru Taylor paper, where all moduli are stabilized in supersymmetric ADS vacuum. Okay, one thing relevant for us also for later, that there is the charge cancellation. We have a compact space, we have O6 planes, they carry negative charge the variety of tadpole conditions that we need to satisfy. And this particular setup uh, where we want to preserve like 3,1 uh, Lorentz symmetry and the external for space-time dimensions, um, there would be those tadpoles, but um, two of them essentially vanish. So we have no one forms, we have no eight planes, we have no four planes, no five forms. So the only tadpole is the DF2 plus H wedge F0 is J06. So this is a tadpole that we need to satisfy. Um, and we can integrate that over any cycle. It should still be true. So integrated over any cycle, DF2 vanishes. And then from H, we get some H threading that three cycle. And the F0 is a fixed parameter. And that needs to be the number of O6 planes. Mm -hmm. So these two numbers multiplied together needs to be the number of O6 planes. That is the number of fixed points under the Z2 involution. It's not overly important. I just thought I mentioned it real quick here. 
there is some degeneracy, some choice, but that is a finite small choice. So for DJKP, DJKT, the number of O planes is two, and then you can choose these fluxes to be plus minus one times plus minus two or plus minus two times plus minus one. So there's maybe four different solutions here for this tadpole condition. But in principle, all of these H flux quanta and all F zero are fixed by the tadpole. So the tadpole fixes two of our flux numbers. This is again, very different from type 2B where all fluxes are fixed. Here, what you actually see, there are three uh, fluxes that just don't appear really in the tadpole that seem to be unconstrained. So it seems we have a lot of freedom in these solutions because these fluxes do not appear in the tadpole. Now, if you look at moduli stabilization, it is not quite as much freedom. So the, the fluxes appear with this particular combination squared. And if you want to stabilize moduli, you need to satisfy those conditions and this condition. So in particular, the B2 axions here in the B2, they are essentially stabilized by the F2 flux divided by F0, which is just a number one or two. So the B2 axions are stabilized by the F2 flux. And whether I choose F2 is 1 million or 1 or 0, it doesn't really matter. It just shifts the B field, and it's the same solution. The B2 is periodic. So the B2 axions, they are periodic. I can just choose whatever flux I want. It's always the same solution. Similarly, the F6 flux, um, it can be essentially removed by, by shifting the C3 axion. It appears C3 wedge the H flux. So if I have H flux, being one, two, three to some three cycle, I can shift the axions and these F6 and F2 fluxes essentially do not matter. So we can set them to zero, we get the same solutions. Um, it's not, not making any changes. However, the F4 flux uh, is not, the F4 flux really makes a difference here and is unconstrained. So the relevant ingredients are only the H3 flux, the mass parameter, the F4 and the O6 planes, and then just an arbitrary color VR manifold. And I will add what I've already said, there, there are objections to that, um, but I will first kind of review DJKT and then discuss uh, uh, objections. So we can stabilize all moduli in ADS vacua. We have a free parameter F4 that in principle needs to integrate over H4 cycle. So we have a lot of free parameters, however, for Simplicity for now, let's just choose one F4, par F4 parameter and all F4 fluxes are the same for every four cycle, or let's take a space with only one four cycle. Then the flux is quantized, but we can choose anything from minus infinity to plus infinity. And the sign is not really relevant for the solution. So for the actual solution, um, we can just choose F4 from zero, which is trivial, which is not really interesting one, two, three, all the way to infinity. So we have an infinite family of solutions and DJKT, they studied properties of these solutions. And the interesting thing is the large flux quanta limit. And there one finds the following scaling. The volume of the internal space scales like F4 to the three halves. So if you make F4 large, this goes to infinity. The string coupling goes like F4 to the minus three quarter. So if you make F4 large, it goes to zero. So, so are, there, are there curvature dependent tadpoles that are not being discussed? Not that I'm aware of, but however, so we, no, we will come to it. Like which are terms that appear when you have D breaks and these fluxes are related to that. So yeah, so the problem, yeah. Those are all I, ignored, I think. Because uh, mm -hmm. right, right, this is a whole smeared limit. Um, so I think in the smeared limit, all the curvature terms should vanish trivially. We, I, I will discuss a little bit more that everything is smeared out. So in that sense, there are not really these curvature tadpoles. I'm also not sure how the O6 planes would couple to R, which are they would wrap three cycles, but there could be such terms. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a very good question. But I, I will tell you in a little bit later that, that everything is smeared and in this particular limit, which might not be justified and which staff objects to, um, those terms would probably be zero, I would assume. Um, so within this solution, essentially that would means we have parametric control over alpha prime corrections. The volume is, can become infinitely large and we can control string loop correction. So we have perfect control. Uh, 
it seems too good to be true and a lot of people believe it's too good to be true i don't know i remain agnostic um, um there are certain criticisms and shortcomings of this construction and i will review them in a little bit i just wanted to discuss a little bit more the details of this particular solution in the large f4 limit so um the interesting thing for 4d physics is the kk scale the cosmological constant and the Hubble. So H is uh, the Hubble scale. And these you can work out and KK goes like one over volume to the six scales like F4 to the minus seven fourths. The lambda scales to the minus nine eighths and H scales like F4 to the minus nine fourths. So they all go to zero. Yes. Tim, can I ask, so the how do we know that the M, so you're estimating the MKK from the from the value of the gator modulus, right? That you have on the and the action, how, how do you know that this is really related to the spectrum of KK modes of internal space? Is it just because you're assuming that, that what I'm asking is, is it possible that there's significant back reaction so that the actual KK modes are different from, from this? Ah, yeah, okay. So this is already way, way ahead in my talk. So. Right, I just, I just want to understand what is the logic that people use, you know, when they use this as an estimate. It's just like the naive thing. Here we smear everything, so there is no real back reaction. Everything is smeared. People object. Oh, well, we we the, the original solution is kind of a smeared integrated solution. There is no real back reaction, um, and then you can just choose a torus or something, and there's just one length scale, and this is the KK mode. Once you localize it, there are back reactions. We actually looked at that in our paper. Um, so I don't really have a slide. I, I wrote it down. There are. Um, papers by Andrio and uh, Dimitrios Simpis, so David Andrio and Dimitrios Simpis, where they have developed a method for studying how these things back react and how that changes the KK masses. We found in our setup, it does not change the leading order behavior. Yeah, very good, very good. Uh, it comes much later, well, in principle on my talk, but you should ask again, yeah. So here, if you plug in the scaling and, and write out these numbers, you find that um, H goes to zero the fastest and then MKK and then Lambda. So um, this is what happens in these ADS vacuums. So I put absolute values here. I tried at least everywhere. Um, the cosmological constant energy scale is much larger than the KK scale is much larger than the Hubble scale. So this is not really what you necessarily want and not what you find in our universe. Obviously our universe is the sitter is positive, but in our universe H is I think 10 to the minus 60 in Planck units, Lambda to the one fourth is 10 to the minus 30 and MKK is certainly way, way, way larger, I think than 10 to the minus 30. Um, so we haven't seen anything about extra dimensions. So here, the last two, the order is reversed. Um, and it's, of course, ADS. But uh, the KK scale is much larger than H. So what that means is that H over MKK, which is the length scale of the internal dimension divided by the length scale of the external space, would go to zero. So the internal space is parametrically smaller than the external space. So this is really a four-dimensional solution, which is very different from, for example, ADS5 times S5, um, where, where the S5 is the same size as the um, ADS5. So this is what makes the solution so unusual. Um, and different from other solutions. So here, let me discuss some of the shortcomings. Yeah, the first one is we have this O6 plane um, and the mass parameter. And the second one is actually, we are using kind of, or I use, I mentioned it, the Calabiao manifold with fluxes. Calabiao manifolds uh, are solutions if you don't turn on any fluxes. As soon as you turn on fluxes, the Calabiao is not a solution to the equation of motion at all. So there are a variety of papers that um, type 2a does not give ADS solutions on Calabiao manifolds. So what have I been telling you before is slightly wrong or is based on a smeared assumption. So the underlying problem is as far as I understand, in general relativity, if you have two intersecting strings, or I mean, in five dimensions, 10 dimension, doesn't matter. If you have any intersecting brain, any massive sources, you can never solve analytically the equations of general relativity. 
So that is my understanding. So given here that we have O6 planes and they intersect, we can never solve the 10 d equations of motion, uh, at least analytically. This is just mathematically currently not I, understood. O6 planes intersect? Sorry? I, I just heard correctly that you said O6 planes intersect in your examples? Yes. Is that unavoidable? Yes. Well, that's a problem. You get massive smalls at the intersection. Yeah, I mean, that is another the, question. You know what the, you get smalls. Yeah, so it is, I think, I, I don't think there's a rigid proof, but I think it's like one of the conjectures from Thomas van Reed, and there are certainly no counterexamples. You cannot do anything with just parallel sources. They need to intersect. Um, well, so why, is, why, does not, why does that bother you? That should bother you, because this will give you massive smalls there. We know that because we can study perturbative strings. Yeah, so yes. So then you get a massive scalar field with, with absorbed potentials and you're not talking about those. Yeah, I don't know what the massless modes would be at the intersection of two or six planes. Um, be, for example, you know, the, if you have product of two or, or orientation reversals, you get no orientation reversal, but the singularity is still there. You get massless modes there and you get to have to talk about super potential for them. Have people talked about this in DGKB? DJKP discusses the blow up mode. So it's essentially, yes, it is a Z3 orbifold and the orbifold singularities give rise then to two CP1s. Um, so it's this, I mean, they discuss locally the, the orbifold singularities. I think, yes. And in principle, one can also stabilize them. So in, yeah, in principle, I think, I think DJKP discusses it to some degree. Now I'm wondering how exactly the orientifold. I, I don't know whether the orientifold. No, you're right. It should be there, well, right where they intersect. If stabilize it, then you can start from the stabilized version, and in that context, there will be no intersecting orientifold. It's either you do or you don't have. So I'm a bit confused. If you could resolve it and put fluxes, you might as well start there. Yes. I think the two things don't sound con consistent with each other. Either you cannot do this. Or if you can do it, then you might as well start there. In which case, so you I think they're taking orientals. I think. I think what DJKP said, they just discussed the 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 orbifold singularities um, and resolved them locally within whatever. And then you started with that Calabria to begin with, because the product of let me say it better, product of two orientals yes. has no orientals. So you first take the Calabria model out by that. And then do one oriented fold, and there will be no intersection, which would be a contradiction with the other statement you were making that you always have to have intersecting oriented folds. So yes. I'm just understanding your state. There's something fishy here. I don't get it. Oh, but yeah. they, they, are me... they are two images under the, so they are the same oriented fold, basically. Yes. Ah, okay. Yeah. So I think what I was talking about, what I had in mind, is the toroidal picture, which is kind of flat space. Um, in flat space or locally flat space, I can try to introduce warp factors and so on, and I can try to localize these O planes. This is destined to fail. If I have a Calabiao or a more complicated geometry where I kind of resolve these singularities and they don't really intersect, I can still try to localize them with introducing warp factors and so on, but I think that is even more complicated and also not possible analytically, I think, to all orders. So, so I mean, Alessandro and, and Daniel and others made a lot of progress, and, and I will mention that. I, I think, I don't think one can in a Calabiao localize this. So in type 2b, you have an overall warp factor for the O3 planes or D3 sources, which turns a Calabiao into some conformal Calabiao. In type 2a, the Calabiao would become an SU3 times SU3 structure manifold, which we don't understand that well. And I don't think anybody has solved the equations with these localized sources or is able to do that. Uh, there is, so just to understand, is there a case where after you smooth it out, after you smooth out, you orient the fold it, and the orient fold don't intersect, or there is no such example? I'm not totally sure. Yeah, because if know. there is no such thing, then I will have the same problem with, with the resolution of that problem. So right. I, I think that I think that the, the 
either there is a there is a case where we for don't intersect, in which case I would like to know those examples. And if there is always a no go theorem, and then you're basically telling me that you have to you have to deal with this mass as well. I'm not sure whether they would need to intersect on a color I don't know whether anybody else knows. Um... But no clean example is known, in other words, where I don't have this issue. No. Well, no, no. I mean, there is some progress made towards this uh, where you start localizing these on um, in certain cases, but only to some degree. Uh, yeah, I, I will discuss it. Yeah, no, there's definitely some issue, I think. But how, how would you resolve and compute the massless modes in practice? Because you have to go beyond uh, stream perturbative theory, but you have the Roman mass, so you cannot go to strong coupling, so how, how? Yeah, I mean, this is also, I mean, th this is part of what I'm gonna talk about, how one can, I mean, essentially the answer is we t-dualize it, then you get rid of the Roman mass, and then maybe you can lift it to M theory, or you can lift it to M theory. So th there is a hope, for example, that you can kind of geometrize the whole setup in M theory. This is kind of the upshot of my talk towards the end. Uh, that if you t-dualize, because essentially here we need only f0 and f4, if you t-dualize, then um, you would get rid of the mass parameter. Yeah. So in, in this original setup, essentially people couldn't localize these O-planes. Um, oh, sorry. And so the best people could do is essentially solve the equations of motions after integrating over the internal space. Um, so essentially this seems like a really crude uh, approximation where kind of you remove the delta function or change the delta function that localizes the O-planes at certain points and change it by to one over the transverse volume, which is a constant. The integrals are the same, but um, you replace like a delta function peak with, with a constant, which is probably as crude as it can be. But this amounts to solving the integrated uh, o, uh, equations of motion. It's often called the smearing, smearing the O-planes over the transverse directions. In some cases we studied that is actually okay, where you can study the localized case and the smeared case, but in other cases, it's probably not okay. And the question is, how does this work? Is this okay here? In principle, the O-planes are BPS, so they preserve some SUSI, but it's not totally clear whether they, they are compatible, uh, whether this is okay. Um, so now I wanted to briefly discuss how this relates to the, the swampland conjectures. So I, I didn't take Aaron or, or Irene or whoever others plot of the swampland mine is very crude and very um, schematic, but uh, I chose it because um, I think this plot is somewhat not representing the current state of the art. It's somewhat wrong. Um, the, the, there is currently no real boundary. And um, I personally would say there is, that's why we are all here, a huge kind of region where we don't really know um, what is going on. And for me personally, DJKT is definitely right in there. There are some people at the workshop, they probably wouldn't put it even outside the swampland, definitely in the swampland. Um, I think it's somewhere in between um, swampland and landscape, and we don't really know what's going on. It has a couple of weird features, but it's ADS, it's super symmetric. It's something we can actually make progress on, and we did, I think, make progress on last July. Um, so the, the conjecture where it's intention with is the ADS distance conjecture that predicts the tower of light states where the M tower goes like the cosmological constant to the alpha and alpha is one half in the strong version for SUSY ADS vacuum. Um, so for DJKP, I just wrote down the KK tower, which seems to be the natural tower for this conjecture. It goes like F to the minus seven fourths, which is F to the one half. Uh, lambda to the one half. And if F4 becomes large, there is a parametrically tension as was pointed out already in the original paper, because this becomes arbitrarily much larger than lambda to the one half. So then either DJKP is wrong, the idea and distance conjecture is wrong, or um, recently Angel Oranga and collaborators, they suggested there could be a refined version of the ADS distance conjecture. Uh, where in the presence of a discrete gauge symmetry, there is um, an extra enhancement of 
for a zk symmetry of k to the one half. So you're talking about the strong ABS distance. I mean, yes. this, this conjecture is more general. And yes. One could very well end up being incorrect without the ABS distance conjecture being incorrect. I think it's very strong. We have strong evidence ah. that it goes like yes. alpha, alpha, alpha so, order one. Yes. Alpha so, one half is a very specific conjecture. Yes. That could end up being right or wrong. So I yes. would say that there's no correction to the general ABS distance conjecture regardless of this story. Yes, sorry, I, I forgot the word strong here. You're absolutely correct. So if this is completely compatible with the ADS distance conjecture for, for a different value of alpha that is not one half. Um, however, it is also compatible with the refined strong distance conjecture in, in this case where there is the discrete ZK symmetry. So that's why I think here is a lot of progress being made. Um, so Angel Wanga, they, they found a lot of cases where, where this is actually the case. And they also established that this DJKT solutions, they have a Z to the F4 discrete symmetry arising from a three form gauge field, which is a C3 uh, Ramon Ramon field uh, in four dimensions that couples to an axion and that breaks uh, the U1 symmetry associated with the three form to the C to the F4. And that leads to MKK goes like F4 to the one half, which is exactly the K to the one half. So with this refined version, it would be also consistent with the refined strong ADS distance conjecture. It's always compatible as Kumran was saying with the regular ADS distance conjecture. Um, however, again, interesting progress here. Um, there are similarly ADS3 vacua um, from Thomas and Otis and collaborators here, uh, where they study type 2A compactified on G2 manifolds. They have likewise a scaling um, scale separated ADS3 vacua, and, and there doesn't seem to be a ZK symmetry. So um, it could be that these would be then a counterexample to the refined strong ADS distance conjecture, but it's not, not totally clear. Um, whether they are or not. Okay, so there's another conjecture which is actually not violated. That is the ADS moduli scale separation conjecture, where essentially the statement is that if you have a space with a Hubble length LH, a very large space, let's say, then you have a very light field such that their product is actually order one. And this is true in DJKT. The um, masses of the, the fields in, in essentially Hubble units is, is order one. So there are very light fields if you have a very small cosmological constant or very small Hubble scale. Um, yeah, so we always have extremely light yeah, fields. I'm understanding that. This is not that. The Hubble scale, you mean the skirt of lambda? One over skirt of lambda, what do you mean by this formula? Yes. Well, are you saying M is over the skirt of lambda? Yes. So why is it not the same as the distance conjecture? I don't understand. Why is it not the same as the distance? Ah, here is not a tower. Here is just one field. So in DJKP, there is no tower. The, in DJKP, there is a gap. The so right field. That there is a state with mass. There's one, there's a finite number of state with mass over the skirt of lambda. Yeah. But they're not infinite. Is that what you're saying? No. Yes, exactly. Yes. But but you're saying there's an effective field theory which includes that? Yeah. In other words, the effective field theory you claim does not break down? At the scale, no. But you can include this extra state that is light into that discussion. No. All, so the volume, the dilaton, and all of those are the light states. So the, the lightest fields are the complex structure of the Calabiao, the volume, and oh, the dilaton. Okay. And then there is nothing. Oh, okay. So the light, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay, very good. Okay, now I wanted to review, there was a recent progress uh, in terms of, of making headway on, on localizing these, these O6 planes and overcoming this smeared limit. Um, so this was done by Daniel Junghans single-handedly. <laughs> and then there was a, a paper shortly after, I think, by Fernando, Aaron, John, and Alessandro, uh, where they also 
made some headway on localizing these O6 brands in the DJKP setup. So they noticed that one can work essentially in this large F4, which I now call N limit. And then they solve the equations of motion order by order in, in a one over N expansion. And order by order, they do the first non-trivial order, which is very interesting. Um, and, and I will have to say a lot more about, about this later. So at leading order, what they find in the one over N expansion. So I had this previous picture where, where two things kind of intersect. So in a toroidal orbifold in my simple mind, you had these, or you have these sources intersecting. Um, what, what they do at leading order is essentially they introduce warp factor and dilaton or what they find, what comes out of the equation. They kind of localize each of them independently. And the final solution at leading order is, is essentially a sum. So it takes into account a localization for each O-plane but it doesn't take into account potential intersections. So the question is whether one can go here to higher order, understand the intersection better. Um, and that is actually a, a surprising outcome, which I didn't appreciate beforehand. Um, so if you try to localize these O planes, even in flat space, what you find is essentially that the coupling blows up near the O plane at a finite distance. Similarly, the curvature blows up near the O6 plane. So what that means, for example, type 2A supergravity is not applicable. Even type 2A perturbative string theory is not applicable because the string coupling blows up. So an O6 plane in type 2A string theory uh, cannot be understood perturbatively. So obviously there's an M theory lift, but um, I, I will talk about that more. But essentially, if you just work with supergravity and you say, can I solve the equations of motions? Uh, and you find no, and that even if you solve them at leading order, it doesn't make much sense. So um, it does not really make sense to solve the O planes close as uh, the, the 10D supra equations near the O6 plane. So even if you become arbitrarily powerful and you can solve all these supra equations, um, you can't really trust the answer. So if you were to use their method and go to next order and try to understand maybe these intersections or whatever is going on, um, that would compete with string loop and alpha prime corrections. So your action that you started with will definitely get corrected near these O6 planes. So pushing this further directly in type 2A probably does not make much sense. So while this is really great and it reproduced the DJKP at least to this order, um, it doesn't make sense necessarily to go beyond that and, and work harder. Uh, there. Tim, can you explain what this diagram is? Yeah, which one this? Yes. Ah, okay. Yeah, this is just me kind of <laughs> trying to do a toy. So let's say you have two intersecting things like 206 planes like this and that. Yeah. Okay. Now I didn't draw them like a cross, but more like an X. Um, let's, let's say now you solve equations for the warp factor or for the dilaton and whatever. You find once you approach the O plane, it starts to- So, so ver vertical is a dilaton value? Yeah, for example, or the warp okay. factor or something like this. Yeah, so I just made a toy kind of model where the dilaton and the warp factor, they kind of diverge. And if you have two of them, they just solve for both of them independently at that order. And then you just add them up. However, in reality, you would expect where they intersect two things to go much more crazy because there are two intersecting. So you would expect the divergence to be different and you would have to solve much more complicated equations, which depend on all coordinates and not just the transverse. So this is essentially um, a superposition of, of solving the transverse dilaton, let's say, but also for the warp factor, yeah. So it, it's just blowing up essentially a 3D plot uh, of, of this feature that the, the, the things blow up near the O6 plane. So here, this region, which is very interesting, um, we can't really solve, or we can't really solve this in type 2A supergravity, um, or it wouldn't make sense even if you could do it. So. Now I want to kind of come to our work, uh, just a few more slides and then, uh, 
so so the the, the idea that that we what we did is we just serialize things and then you open up the possibility of going through m to m theory um so this was actually done very early on by by banks and Vandenbroek in in 2006 shortly after dgkt they tried to understand it and they tried to lift it to m theory so they said wait the 06 planes are somehow there and we don't understand them uh, so one might be tempted to uplift these to 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 m theory um however um yeah so well, let me just mention it men lifts to some atia hitchin space so it's essentially geometry and and it should be somehow smoothed out by some quantum corrections and should be able we should be able to understand it there however we don't know how to get massive type 2a from m theory so once we have a mass parameter we can't lift to m theory the f0 is essentially preventing a lift and then one can of course directly work in in uh, type 2a so there's some interesting work by alessandro um he will study these singularities and see whether it really blows up and so on but uh this is not what i'm going to do in this talk in this talk I want to kind of get rid of the mass parameter. And the mass parameter is you just T dualize twice. So if you T dualize type 2A twice, you land up again with type 2A. And the fluxes get shifted. So we had before F0, F4, H3, and no curvature for the Calabiao. And now F0 becomes F2, F4, depending on the legs, could either become F2 or F6. H actually ends up being vanishing, and R6. Uh, becomes a vanishing H flux. So here H becomes geometry. R6, I miss, what is R6? R6 is kind of the curvature of the internal space. So before we assumed some kind of Calabiao geometry or torus or toroidal orbifold, which are Ricci flat. And now we will have non Ricci flat compactifications. This is before or yet the folding unit? Yeah. So you think you have to lay on a non Calabia and then you orbifold that, orient for that. Yes, yes. So this is kind of the price, but this is essentially the T-dual of H-flux. So just take a torus with H-flux and, and T-dualize it, then you find this non this geometry, which people studied. It's, it's like some torus vibration. It's not a flat space anymore, but it's not dramatic either. So uh, sorry, when you say T-duality, uh, T-duality with respect to what? I thought you were talking about Carabio. Now are you in torus? Yeah, so I'm going to restrict, I mean, Yes, I'm going to restrict right now to a torus. I, I, yeah, because you, essentially you can also study a non Calabiao compactification, a, a space which has R6 non zero. But essentially, there's a simple class we can get Tim, from. Uh, so, sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt yes. you, but your audio just started to become funny. Like uh, maybe you can like to replug the cable or something, maybe something like that. Good question. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Does I have my monitor? I mean, is, is that just me? Does everybody else hear Tim normally? Or uh, I hear some noise. Sometimes it happens uh, uh, when there is an issue with the internet. But... Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's get going. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, I asked this because uh, when I, I remember around this around that time when this kind of T-duality process was discussed by Banks and maybe Taylor also, I thought that there was some issue of doing T-duality in the direction that where there is no symmetry. You don't have that program? This is the one before, before, right? The, yeah, the, here also the everything is smeared, so I think I, I don't think, Hiroshi, I don't think that's an issue. Like the generalized picture of mirror symmetry says that even if you don't oh. have exact duality. Oh, okay. All right. So maybe I, I should. Uh, uh, correct. I don't think that should be an issue. Yeah. Well, I would okay. have issue with, with whether or not there are moduli uh, when you start the non calabia before you even orient for anything. What happened to the potential for those moduli? And mm -hmm. I guess he's going to tell us. So I'll wait to hear. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I, I'll just uh, wait. Yeah. I mean, so. One way to obtain it is essentially just using this Boucher rose T duality on a torus, but you can also start um, directly. For example, here the result is this Iwasawa manifold. Um, that is a manifold which has non trivial curvature, it's called nil manifolds. Um, Thomas just wrote it, I think, in the chat. So you could study I, I directly. Think 
Sorry, okay. I th Hiroshi, I think you're worried about the situation where you have three T dualities, not two. In, the, in, in this uh, two case, you're okay. Oh, ah, okay, yeah, oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you for correcting. That was my question. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you T dualize too much, uh, H flex would become non-geometric and then you lose control of alpha prime corrections and so on. But here's a purely geometric compactification. It's not any more massive type 2A. I'm oh, sorry. Um, so before I just said 1F4 flux, here we just need to become a little bit more complicated. So I mean, most of this should generalize, but um, just for the toroidal picture, toroidal orbifold, the F0, the mass parameter becomes F2. And F2 is constrained by the tat pro. We said before it has to be plus minus one or two. Um, F4 was unconstrained. That becomes F6, but it also becomes F2. So now the unconstrained F4 becomes unconstrained F2, but there's also constrained F2. So it's a little bit confusing in a second, but I try to use the colors. For now, the first thing one can look at is there is one F2 constrained by TAPPO due to the non-trivial symmetry, which is essentially threading this circle, uh, this torus that we T dualized on. And then there are two unconstrained F2, but let's focus on this one for right now. Um, the path pole, before the two T dualities, we didn't really have F2. And we solved essentially F0 times H is a constant uh, in this smeared integrated limit, and that was non zero. After two T dualities, H is zero. So then this H disappears here. Now suddenly DF2 is a constant. So F2 is not closed. F2 is not a closed form. So when you hit it with D, it's non, non zero. And that is something that happens in these nil manifolds. Um, and that was kind of one of the issues that Banks and Vandenbroek faced. So M theory lift is kind of trivial. You just use the standard dictionary. The 11 dimensional geometry is just a 10 dimensional geometry, the Lacan factor. And then you have one extra coordinate Z. And here's the C1 form, which is the potential, the gauge potential for the F2 field strength. And when Banks and Vandenberg used this dictionary, I wrote here G4, we don't need it. Um, this doesn't really work because if you calculate DC1 equals F2, that implies that D squared C1 equals zero. Um, and that, however, from here is non zero. So Banks and Vandenberg face this problem that in this presence of the smeared sources, once you smear your O planes, this F2 is non-closed and this is a constant versus zero. However, the M theory is kind of smart. M theory knows um, there is a gauge potential DF2 should be zero everywhere except maybe at delta function spaces. Um, this doesn't work. So Banks and Vandenberg couldn't overcome these smeared O6 planes. So when they tried to lift it to M theory, they were kind of destined to fail because they had the smeared O6 planes. Um, and they essentially just said they throw away some part of F2, lift it to M theory and make up a new part. But that is not really the correct way. You need to really work out the solutions. And now thanks to Daniel and, and others, we, we have these localized solutions that we can actually localize and then lift to M theory. So what we did is we kind of t dualized DJKP, we, we reapplied these methods um, for localization, and then we could actually lift things to M theory. Um, so here, as I said before, now it becomes relevant. We have in principle on a torus, three unconstrained parameters F4 that become three unconstrained parameters, two F2 and one F6. I have some here in red. So here's a picture, we have F6, threading the whole internal space, which is this Ibazawa manifold. And we have two F2 fluxes, which thread those two spaces. And now we have three parameters that we can dial however we want from zero to infinity. And they don't need to all scale exactly the same. You could have done the same already in the evolved Gary Abbott's Katru Taylor. If you scale them differently, not all of these spaces are the same size. Before we had just said, okay, let's set them all equal. Everything has the same size. But now if I just make this one larger than this one, and this one a little bit smaller, it's all okay. Or this one even fixed. So what, what we did is we studied the scalings and even in the double T-dual solutions, we find parametrically weak coupling and parametrically large volume for all cycles and a variety of different scalings. However, what is even more interesting, we find parametrically strong 
coupling and parametrically large volume for, for all cycles. So we find solutions in non-massive type 2a now where the volume of all two cycles is large. So they are not equally large for all of them necessarily, but all volumes become large in this parametric control limit and the coupling becomes arbitrarily strong. The solutions have again still scale separation. And the interesting thing now is since the coupling is strong everywhere, including near the O planes where it grows up anyways, we have solutions that, that are not, of course, trustable in type 2a, but since they're everywhere strongly coupled, we can now just apply the M theory dictionary um, and we can lift them to M theory. So in principle, we have provided solutions to leading order in M theory that, that have parametrically large volume and, and strong coupling in type 2a. Um, we have done the localization only to first order and then lifted it to M theory. So the localization to first order was required to do M theory. Um, in M theory, hopefully one can do more than this first order localization, but we have not done that. Yes. I'm sorry, just to make sure I understand. So the point is that you can find both solutions that are, have parametrically weak coupling and strong coupling, or that yes. you can yes. only find strong coupling? No, you can find both. So depending on how you choose, so let's say this scales like n, and then this could scale like n to the one half, n to the three halves, n to the one hundred. This could scale the same. So I have kind of three different powers of n scaling, and depending on how I choose them, how I choose how they scale, I can find parametrically large volume and parametrically strong coupling and parametrically weak coupling. So you can find a lot of different things. Yeah. But why didn't you focus on the strong coupling? Why not just the weak coupling? Ah, one can study the weak coupling too. However, there you face the issue that um, essentially when you try to localize the O planes, inevitably in these toros you have intersecting O planes and near the intersection this whole localization method that is order by order breaks down because at this near these regions string loop corrections and alpha prime corrections change everything and in type 2a we don't know all alpha prime corrections or string loop corrections however once you lift it to m theory the hope is that the geometry there doesn't is is easier to understand but in the in the solution in the solution with parametrically strong coupling you also have intersecting yes openings. yes so yes. that happens in both cases Yes, we always have the intersecting openings. In the strong coupling, we have everywhere strong coupling, including here. In the weak coupling, we still have some regions where there is strong coupling, and we can understand them better because we don't understand strong coupling except in the M theory picture. So then we just lift it to M theory, and um, that is currently the, the state of the art. Um, yeah. So this localization method, I just have two more slides and then uh, I finish. This localization method is kind of very interesting because the smeared solutions, um, as Saab was saying, they seem totally crazy um, because there are no smeared openings and blah, blah, blah. If you unsmear them, in principle, everywhere you need to remove the open and at one point you need to hit the delta function. So the leading order corrections, they need to really change your results at the, the tree level or whatever, how you want to call it, uh, the smeared result uh, dramatically. And one way to see that the Iwasawa manifold we started with kind of has R6 negative. If R6 is negative, if you know from ADS times ADS5 times S5, the internal space needs to be positive curved, otherwise you can't get ADS. So if R6 is negative, this term is negative, the so seven dimension curvature and the flux here is also negative. So what that means in that case is that the scalar potential would always be positive. So what Banks and Vandenberg tried in this weird limit was kind of destined to fail because the negative curvature here would never give you ADS. And the interesting thing is the corrections, they completely change this to make the internal space actually positively curved. So similarly to ADS5 times S5, we have here ADS4 times an R7 manifold, where the R7 manifold through the corrections gets uh, corrections and becomes positive, and then ADS vacuum are allowed. So in that sense, it is consistent. We just mentioned here, similarly in the tadpole condition, 
you had that the sources are smeared, you have a constant here, and now suddenly it needs to become a delta function. The corrections, the leading order of one over n correction, they do that. They remove the constant everywhere and they insert the delta function spike, kind of not perfect delta function at leading order, but essentially they dramatically change your smeared solutions as is required. Higher order corrections um, is, is not as dramatic. And, and haven't really been worked out. And as I said, I think my understanding is that in type 2a, it wouldn't make much sense to go beyond the leading order, but the hope is that ultimately in M theory, where we have now a singular geometry that hasn't been fully understood, that maybe when one can get a handle on it, one can see whether there are new degrees of freedom, whether correction smooths that out, or whether there is something going wrong. Um, so this is kind of the state of the art. The abstract is essentially we, we t dualized it. So TJKP is is very interesting, I think, because it's supersymmetric. And yes, it's as controlled maybe as you can hope for, which not being totally trivial. Um, it has a lot of interesting solutions, but it has a lot of shortcomings like smeared or six planes, t dual. Um, solutions, however, have no mass parameter, and then we can unsmear uh, and localize things and we can lift it to M theory. So um, it hasn't been fully understood yet. And M theory has a weird, uh, has a singularity in the 70 geometry. But I think in principle, this provides another angle of, of attack, which, which wasn't really present in, in type 2A uh, setting. Okay, so thank you very much.